Well, a cold case gets hot again with new questions about whether the killers from a notorious murder also murdered another family while on the run. Richard Hickok and Perry Smith were hanged in the 1960s for the murders of a Cam Kansas family. Their grisly crime spree captured in the pages of Truman Capote's classic In Cold Blood. The two men went to the gallows for the November 1959 killings of Herbert Clutter, his wife, and their two children. Now, more than 50 years later, they are being eyed in a set of murders nearly identical. The killings of Cliff and Christine Walker and their two young children in Osprey near Sarasota, Florida, a month after the Kansas killings. The two men were spotted in Florida while they were on the run for the Kansas murders. And eyewitnesses remember seeing them in Sarasota on the same day the Walkers were killed. Well, now authorities want to exhume the killer's bodies to see if they have a DNA match. Here's forensic expert Dr. Michael Bodden on the cold case yesterday on Happening Now. I think the concept that police departments have and are brought up that old cases can still be solved with evidence from 50 years ago if they save the evidence and if they bring it forth. Joining us now, Shannon McFarland, a reporter for the Sarasota Herald Tribune. She is covering the story for her paper and has broken much of this new information. Uh, so, Shannon, what is it that led police, first of all, just to the idea, the general idea that these two guys might be responsible? You know, the, the sheriff's office has a list of nearly 600 suspects that they've compiled in the last 50 years, and these guys were actually suspects for the first three months of the investigation and dismissed after polygraph and fingerprints allowed uh, detectives to think that it wasn't them. And Capote, in his book, talks about them, talks about their time in Florida, mm -hmm. but dismisses the possibility that they could have been responsible, right? Yeah, Capote has about three pages mentioning the Walker murders and does the same thing that de detectives did earlier. He mentions that they have an alibi and fingerprints and polygraphs lead them to be decisively negative that they're, they were the suspects. So tell us some of the coincidences, some of the things that police are looking at that Capote got wrong. You know, Capote mentioned that they were in uh, Miami at a hotel on Christmas Day. And that's one of the things that p detectives checked out and realized they checked in earlier than they said they did and that they didn't actually stay for five days. They asked for a refund the day after they got there, the day the walkers were killed. And hotel never staff didn't see them again. So we're looking at a picture of the Walker family, Cliff, Cliff and mm -hmm. Christine, their children, Jimmy and Debbie. Uh, it, mm -hmm. It's my understanding that there is DNA evidence uh, still available to prosecutors if there's DNA evidence of these potential killers, these suspects, right? Well, it's not necessarily to prosecutors because you can't prosecute the, the suspects if they're dead. Right, I should, have, I should have they, said investigators. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah, but the, the investigators, they've saved all of this evidence, and as the technology has caught up with the case, they've come back and retested and tested and tested again and finally found DNA evidence in 2004. They started testing suspects and eliminating some people that may have been higher suspects and came back to these guys. And now they're hoping that some of the, that DNA evidence may match one of these guys. What's the thinking about the walkers? What was the motive? How, how would these guys have connected with them? The idea is that the Walker family was car shopping on the day of their murders, something that they would not normally do that would take them out of their regular element. And that these, that um, Smith and Hickok while they were traveling the country were stealing cars or selling off parts of cars or stolen items and were regularly at car dealerships and gas stations. And that they spotted the family, talked with the family, asked around about someone who was looking to trade or buy a car. And they were driving, Smith and Hickok were driving the same model car that the Walkers were looking at. A 1956 they, Chevy Bel Air. Mm-hmm and they followed the family home or got directions to the family's home and maybe they intended to offer a deal or they got there intending to kill them. But uh, again, they are uh, hoping that they can exhume these guys and match the DNA evidence that was left mm -hmm. behind at the Walker crime scene. 
uh, to one or both of these convicted killers? Yeah, the sheriff's office has not even finished writing the exhumation order yet. They're still working on it, and as soon as they're finished with that, the order will go to Kansas. Kansas will go through their process to approve it through a judge and to exhume these guys from the cemetery in Kansas. But nobody knows whether there is usable DNA evidence remaining after, what, 40 years underground for these guys, more than that? Yeah, and it's, I mean, the, the, the bones themselves have DNA evidence, and they... Um, I talked to some DNA analysts who said they regularly find DNA, viable DNA, in bodies that are at least this old or older. And so there's, there's a very good chance that it could, they could get DNA from it, but you know, there's always the chance that it won't be there or that it won't match. Well, uh, it is a fascinating case. I know you've been doing great work on it for your paper there, and uh, we'll continue to watch it and, and, and put the link up there on our website so that people can continue to follow your work. Thanks very much. Thank you.